Are you so excited we're talking about the animal kingdom? I feel like everyone's pretty excited when we get to this unit, okay? So yes, we are talking about the animal kingdom for this coming unit, for this week. Okay, so last week we kind of touched on all the different kingdoms. Now we're going to take the animal kingdom a little bit more in depth, okay? Not the one in Disney World that I wish I was in right now, you know, sunny Florida. But nonetheless, by the way, we only have a few weeks left. Let's enjoy these weeks, okay, before Christmas break. So let's go back to animals. So animals, I think, rock. I love animals. Who doesn't love animals? Most people like animals, at least one kind of animal. And this kingdom is definitely one of my favorites to study but not just because we're a part of it. There's just a lot of really cool creatures, a lot of things that um, you know really make me like this kingdom and just learning more about it. But what about you guys? You, know, you don't have to answer me. You don't have to answer the computer. But maybe you guys like the animal kingdom as well. What sticks out to you about this kingdom? Why? Think about it. Is there anything in particular that maybe you, know, you enjoy and you wanna learn more about? Because this is the time to kind of figure out all right, I would love to do some research on maybe a particular animal because you're going to get that chance in just a moment. Well, later this week. All right, so first of all, the animal kingdom is huge. Huge, like this cat, like this sandwich. No, not really. It's bigger than that. It's about 40 phyla that make up this kingdom. So remember, when we talk about kind of the hierarchy and we talk about the domain, then the kingdom, the phylas, the classes, the orders, and so forth, 40 phyla make up this kingdom. That's a lot more phyla than that make up the other kingdoms that we've talked about. So keep that in mind that when we talk about the animal kingdom, it encompasses a lot, a lot of stuff, okay? Let's go into a few details, by the way. Look at this really cool picture. Just all color pencils, just the details. Okay, anyways, let's, uh, let's talk about some details. This is one of my favorite things is I get to tell you a little bit about the different phylas, okay? We're not gonna go into all 40 because we don't have time. I'd be here for like six hours with you guys. But we're gonna talk about the periphera to begin with. Periphera means pore bearing, okay? These simple creatures are covered with pores and they get their nutrients by the method of filter feeding. Can anyone think of what might be a periphera? Filled with holes. Hmm. You guys might use it daily to clean the dishes, which so many of you guys love to do. So yes, we are talking about sponges. So they do this awesome thing called filter feeding because they have all these little, you know, holes that basically their food kind of comes in through that, those, you know, filters in through um, the sponge, and then, you know, basically waste can come out. So it's kind of cool. So again, I'm not gonna touch on a ton of details, but keep this in mind as I go through these different phyla, maybe something sticks out because you're gonna do a project where you get to research a little bit more. So the peripheras, interesting, right? Okay, my favorite phyla out of the animal kingdom, the cnidarias. The cnidaria, or cnidaria, which means stinging cells, they have tentacles with very specialized stinging cells for capturing their prey. So within these stinging cells, you know, they can kind of paralyze, so to speak, their prey and be able to eat them. So they include coral, um, also often mistaken for a plant. So corals are not part of the plant kingdom. They are part of the cnidarias. And a lot of times we think they look so, either coral looks really rough, it can be very sharp, first of all, and it can have those stinging cells, as well as sea anemones, which a lot of you guys know, the sea anemones, they look so pretty and they kind of flow in the water, but they can sting, okay? And of course, jellyfish. So here's some pictures. I just think they're so cool. I have seen a jellyfish once in my life and it was only about that big, and I was fascinated. I was actually snorkeling. And they're so small, but you know, like you don't know if it's still gonna sting. So it was like, oh, but I was like, so fascinated that I didn't want to move away from it. It was totally clear. You could hardly see it. So it wasn't anything like these bigger. Um, and again, jellyfish isn't exactly what we call them. So if you guys choose to do this as um, maybe something that you research, you'll find out the actual name. We sometimes call them just a sea jelly. So there's all sorts of different ones, some sea anemones. They're all different ranging in colors, um, sizes, shapes, you name it. They're very cool. I love them. All right, next is the mollusca. They have soft bodies, but they sometimes have a shell, sometimes without. It just depends on what we're looking at. So they also have a muscular foot. So when you think of a mollusca, okay, think of like some of you guys might eat mussels, okay? A mussel is a great example of a mollusca. And what you're eating is that mm, yummy muscular foot, okay? It's a strong, strong, very strong, fleshy appendage, and it's structured and used differently among classes. 
Also, another great example of a mollusca would be a snail, okay, or escargot. Um, mm, yummy. That's probably the, actually the best example because sometimes you don't always see in the mussel. Uh, you know what? I take that back. I don't think a mussel follows the m mollusca. Those are, um, are what we call our bivalves. So I'm sorry, I think I probably led you astray a little bit. But the molluscas definitely tend to have a shell, but a slug can also be a, um, a mollusca. But I want you guys to think of, you know, this big appendage, this muscular foot is, um, think about, the, about that snail that kind of has that muscular foot, very strong, okay? Not only does it, you know, allow for that locomotive, uh, the locomotion with it, but you can also have a hard time kind of pulling them free off of something they're stuck on, okay? So that would be an example of a mollusca. Three main classes of mollusks include the gastropods, okay? So gastro means stomach. So that's a stomach foot. Those include snails and slugs. Oh, I was right, bivalves. Bivalves are part of the mollusca. It's been a long, long weekend, good, but full of sickness, so I think I'm a little out of it. So the bivalves, okay, so again, that does include the molluscas. Two shells, so typically the bivalves, when you think of bi, is two. So two shells that kind of close and clamp. So oysters and um, scallops and those mussels and all those things. The cephalopods, cephala means head. So these are a very unique class composed of octopus, squid, and their relatives, okay? So those are the molluscas. They're kind of interesting creatures, so to speak. And we eat a lot of them. Mmm, yummy. I actually like the taste of the octopus. Uh, I've only had escargot once. And squid, I love. Give me some calamari. Mmm, I'll eat it on up. So those are some pictures of the mollusca. All right. And the arthropods. So scientists estimate that there are about 2 million species of arthropods on the planet. That's crazy, right? Two million. I mean, I could hardly touch on two or three, um, but just so you guys know, this is such a vast, huge um, phyla, you know, that encompasses so many different things. So arthropod means jointed foot, okay? So all arthropods have jointed appendages. So kind of like us, you know, not that we're an arthropod, but we have jointed appendages. Our appendages being our arms, they're jointed. We have many different joints, okay? As well as some kind of a hard exoskeleton. Now, we do not have an exoskeleton. It'd be pretty cool if we did. It might be a little heavy. But the arthropods have those jointed feet, or jointed foot, should I say, jointed appendages, okay, and an exoskeleton. So a hard protective surface on the outside of their body, okay? We have our protective on the inside, okay? We have a, like an endoskeleton is what we call it, okay? They also have a segmented body plan with a head, a thorax, and an abdomen or a combination of a head and thorax, which we call the cephalothorax. And the two most numerous classes of arthropods are the crustaceans, which are crabs, lobsters, shrimp, and other things that fall into the crustaceans, and the insecta, okay? Other classes include spiders, centipedes, millipedes. I mean, it, like I said, it goes on forever. There's two million species of arthropods. So lots of things. Think about all the insects. Insects in the world are kind of classified into arthropods, okay? And there's tons of them. So just think about those main things that make up the arthropods, the jointed appendages, the exoskeletons, and those segmented body plans, okay? Here's some pictures of them. Lovely, right? The tarantula, the grasshopper, and all of these different crustaceans. Well, this is a crustacean, the centipede here, the insecta, and the spider, okay? All right, echinodermata. These are pretty cool, too. Echinodermata means spiny skin. Okay, so this group includes the sea stars, sea urchins, sand dollars, sea cucumbers, which are the weirdest looking creatures. Not the weirdest, but they're pretty weird looking. They look like a colorful piece of poo. Um, anyways, and brittle stars. So lots of different things are encompassed in this one as well. These are really cool, obviously things that I love to look for when I am snorkeling, which I don't get to do a ton. They all have radial symmetry. Okay, no left or right sides, they're symmetrical no matter how you cut it, okay? So that's what radial symmetry is. So it's not like you could just, well, you could just fold it in half and it would meet, but you could fold it any way. It's not like us that we only have symmetry going down the middle of our bodies where you have a, a you know, left and a right. Radial symmetry, exact same way, no matter how you slice it, okay? So here's a sea cucumber right here, kind of crazy looking, right? Um, you know, some of these different sea stars, a sea urchin, so there's some really cool things in the echinodermatas. All right, the chordatas. This phylum includes a couple of oddballs like the sea squirts, okay? And the subphylum vertebra, vertebra, vertebrata, sorry, composed of the animals with the two backbones, okay? 
fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. Yes, we are in this one, okay? So we are a mammal, and obviously there's many other things that are put into the chordata, but remember, that's just the phylum. So when it breaks down, there's also number one, there's subphylums, but then there's classes within each of those, and orders, and so forth, okay? And that's how we can get to these really specific things. All right, these all have true a true brain attached to a central nervous cord, or nerve cord. And the most advanced levels of development happen within the chordatus, okay? So, you know, that's why we have dogs for pets and not a sea cucumber, although you could have that for a pet, wouldn't do much, right? But nonetheless, um, they are definitely the most intelligent because we have the most, um, you know, kind of uh, developed nervous system, so to speak, okay? The most um, intricate. So here's some pictures of all sorts of different um, chordatas. You know, you have the birds, the fish, um, lizards, amphibians, you know, mammals, and so forth, okay? So that's about it. You know, there are so much more things to discuss when we talk about the animal kingdom. And we're missing a lot of pieces of the puzzle, but I would say we, we covered some things, some really cool things. These are the things that you're going to find in your unit and in your lesson quiz. So I do want you guys to go through your unit, read through, and see if you guys can find some more facts about some of those different phylums, especially the ones that maybe really interest you because then you'll start to be doing the work for your actual project for this week. All right, we will see you guys in class.